joins us now in the studio. Thanks very much for coming to speak to us this morning. Were you surprised by the Republican movement um, restarting this campaign for Australia to become a republic? I think it's about the fifth or sixth start since the referendum. Each one pulls away further and further from actually having something to propose. It is now so vague as though they're going down the street saying, we want a republic, but we haven't the foggiest idea what sort of republic we want. What I find surprising is that uh, what they're now saying, what Malcolm is saying, keep on voting until you get it right. It's something that's been used in the European Union. We decided this. We spent 10 years. Millions and millions of dollars were spent. There have been about 12 parliamentary votes, national votes, pieces of legislation and so on. It's time, really, to give it a break, surely. Do you think that the issue is not so much that Australians don't necessarily want a republic, but the idea of what kind of a republic we might choose to be is what's holding people back from actually wanting to make that move forward? Well, we say, or many of us say, John Howard, Tony Abbott, Michael Kirby, we say we're a crowned republic, we're already a republic. What is being proposed is a politician's republic. Now, that's just not an empty piece of words. This means that the political class, that part of the constitutional system, will have increased powers or there'll be more of them and it will take away a very significant part of our constitutional system which has been there from the settlement and which, which ensures that there's a check and balance on the political parts of the system. But is it not quite healthy to still be able to have that sort of discussion that uh, perhaps in the years ahead that Australia might become a republic? Uh, because I suppose at the moment we look at the Queen and there's quite a lot of affection for the Queen, but what happens when the Queen passes? Discussion is healthy. I think what, hap what will happen when the Queen passes is that there'll be an enormous worldwide retrospective. I think the, the royal wedding is nothing like what will happen with the media and then there'll be enormous concentration not only on the coronation but also the next Prince of Wales who will probably be Prince William. So the fascination will be there but many constitutional monarchists are not just royalists, they may not even be royalists, it's the constitutional issue. If you're going to remove a significant part of the constitution you've got to explain what you're going to put in its place and make sure that you have those same checks and balances. Professor Patrick Lane, who was a professor of constitutional law, probably one of our greatest constitutional lawyers at the university, said he was no monarchist, said the Republicans really have to start again. They have to present a completely new constitution. And if you look at countries which are successful politicians' republic, the United States, Switzerland, you'll see that they have a very different constitution from ours, which is the Westminster system, which particularly in our federation requires this institution with powers, discretionary powers, held in trust for the people as a constitutional guardian, and that's the crown, the Australian crown with the governors, the governors general and so on, who are not politicians. So we need to rethink our constitution if we are considering a move towards yes. a republic altogether. If you're going to have a serious discussion about a republic, you don't talk about identity, national identity. We all know, we all know what an Australian is. We know that. There's no need to do that. What you've got to do is do the hard work, the hard work of working out what you want to do. And there's no point saying, oh, we'll work that out later. We'll get rid of this institution. We'll change the flag, all these things. That doesn't work. What you've got to do, if you want to persuade the Australian people, is present them with a realistic proposition and say, look, we think this is better than what we have, and then have a debate. Because the Republicans have actually vowed this time around to say that they, they will engage with the public, something that they accept that they didn't do well enough last time. Well, I don't think you engage with the public by having candlelit dinners or non-candlelit dinners and so on. What you do, if you want to engage with the public, is you go away and you do some very hard work. You produce a model, a new constitutional model, and you say to the Australian people, let's discuss that. But they haven't done that. They've gone, they've run a mile from where they were in 1999, but at least 
at least the majority of Republicans, and they were given carte blanche at the Constitutional Convention. We should never forget that. They were told, write the model you want, and they used their best minds, and they produced a model. They had enormous support. Two-thirds of the politicians supported them. A lot of the, the press supported them. The Australian was running the campaign, and they put it to the people, and what happened? It was defeated not only nationally, it was defeated in every state. That's pretty significant. And 72% of electorates. Now, if Mr Abbott gets 72% of the electorates, that will be a real landslide in September. That's an extraordinary route of the Republican proposal. Well, I, I believe that this might be the last time we'll be no. talking about this issue, but that's all we have time for at the moment. Thank you so much, David Flint, Thank for Thank you for your us. time.